Thank you very much for attending the session. A couple people coming up. Um, yeah, to me, um, slide one of two seventeen. I'm, I'm only kidding. So don't worry about it. Only two hundred. It just if I put two seventeen on there, make sure you're like forty. You go, I was pretty nice. It's not so easy to do something. So um, we'll get started on this. Uh, So I'm going to start, I'm going to show a few slides ahead of time, and really these slides are meant to um, sort of set the tone for what we're going to be talking about. So these are really not technical slides, actually there are no technical slides for the whole presentation, but this is really meant to set the tone. So, uh, oh by the way, I'm going to give you some slides from a lot of here to assist in the presentation. And uh, also get coffee, whatever you need. Try to differentiate. From other people. Anybody else? No, nobody else does that. So, um, a couple quotes. Um, one hallmark of a great solution is the ability to scale. Another is if we do more than you expect. So, anybody get with you who said that? Einstein or Boring? Anybody know? It's interactive session. Anybody? I will tell you in a second. Um, I said that. <laughs> so I mean, it wouldn't surprise me, but it sounds good. I mean, it's actually true. Um, pretty recent. Um, the second quote. Anybody who's seen me do a presentation, I love to use this quote. Um, everybody wants progress, but nobody wants change. Now, depending on your role in the organization, this will ring more true than it can. But it, it's a very true statement. What we try to do is um, we want all these things, but we really want to minimize learning curves, expense, things like that, right? But we still want to get to, to that next level. Um, so I didn't say it, I really wish I said that it's way smarter than the one I came up with. Maybe the next question is on a better one. You do all right. Oh, there's a problem. Check them out. Hello. Welcome. Hello, sir. Good to see you. So uh, just setting the stage, a few more slides, then we'll really get into this whole uh, by the way, really interactive. I just love people who work with me, you know, um, ask questions, just whatever, do anything you want. It's just nice to have that interaction, sort of a live, you know, through it that way. Um, so, what I'm talking about really does is really about uh, getting progress with very little change. And it's really, it's actually doable. I have a question, first of all um, how many folks here have a communication manager? Well, then. She said, does it? Thank you. Uh, anybody have affinity? Who wants to admit to it? <laughs> oh, I got one. The guy in back. Two sites under conversion. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I, I have affinity. Well, the last one I just affinity like four or something. I think we had a guy in like, when we were up in Wisconsin. Like, really oh, yeah. The phones have like Roman numerals. I have you beat. It's a three. Oh. It's a three. That's old. But they still work, I mean, right? So that's the whole thing. So just a couple more things. So before we get back to this, again, just leading us up to what I'm about to talk about here, it's a real good stuff, like two stories um, that really, I think, highlight what this presentation is about. The first one is a true story. Uh, it happened to me about we had leased a car a few years ago. And when it comes a day, we have to turn it in. I don't have to speak up, but you have, to, you have to turn the car. And we had it for three years. I remember this actually happened. I'm sitting in the garage, got the car rubbed up, waiting for the wife to come out. And while I'm waiting for her, I see a button. I remember it was on the left, bottom left. And I, I, don't, I know it, it had to have been there, obviously. And I hit it, and the screen went up in the back of my window. You have those screens in the back window? And I thought, that's great. I wish you knew about that three years ago. I was just about to turn the car in. So I guess the best, that's kind of fitting with what we're talking about. That's the best time to know about it is before you before you upgrade the Infinity 3 or whatever. Um, the second one is a rented car story. Uh, a lot of people here have rented cars, I would shuttles, let's say. But if you rented a car, we've all had the experience where we go to return it. I don't think they charge these days for gas at a rent car place, we don't put it in there. It's probably something huge. It's huge anyway. But, um, so you pull in the gas station, and you're like, well, no, nah, I had never thought about this ahead of time. Where's the tank? Where's the, you know, where am I filling up? And does anybody know? Do you know? Yeah. Look out the door. It's going to air. Look out the door. Look out the door. Look out the door. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, you know, we're going to be wrong as yet. But they don't have the air. 
You know what, by the way, we're going to give away prizes. Uh, where's our prize giver person? Is it? You know, uh, that thing deserves about five minutes. If you ask a really good question, actually, I should get prizes. If no, don't anybody ask questions, we'll give you all prizes. We're all hungry. You got enough for that? Okay, so we'll just do the other part. So if you ask a really good question, um, then you get a prize. So this gentleman. Yeah. So, that, so anyway, the, the reason, again, this goes into what I'm talking about. If you look at most cars, there's a little arrow right over there. And then you know the gas gauge is on the left side of the car. Okay. But the point is, these things, which we're about to talk about, are always in front of you, right? We know these things. They're there. And um, just a matter of seeing them in a different way, there's somebody pointing them out to you, right? And I, I will almost guarantee that everybody in this room, will, if you know what you knew about it, will go look at that gas gauge when you knew about it. So, by the way, how many features does communication manager have? 700. Too many counts? Right, counts. Uh, right, 700 plus. And do you think anybody here could name, if I, if I, I'm not going to do it, but if I give somebody a minute to name 10% of those, do you think anybody can do that? It would be pretty tough, right? I mean, we, we're used to the same features over and over again. So what's buried in those 700? I mean, we could probably name 20 if we really took time to think about it. But there's got to be a lot of stuff buried. I know most of that has to do with diagnostics. There's some routines that run that are considered, uh, you know, programs and options and things. Those don't really count. But um, a lot of features. So the, the thing here is that you've sat through days of presentations, another day or so to go, and you're hearing about a lot of things that you can do, a lot of things you can buy, uh, solutions, great things happening. The buyers coming out with this big growth spur with virtualization and all these things right now. It's just fantastic. And what we're noticing is that obviously the PGX size goes down, the features are increasing, but really what I want to talk to you about is investment in production. And that's really sets the stage. Because um, there are many features that are supposed to be going on. And I do want to point out one last thing here, which is this. Um, this presentation really doesn't have an end. I'm not going to ask people to sit here for the next week or something. You're welcome to, I'll be gone tomorrow. <laughs> but um, you can't get the next slide. But, um, it doesn't have an end. I mean, when our time is up, we're going to be someplace in this presentation, right? And that's where we'll end your time. But with 700 something features, I don't have all those listed here. But I mean, quite often, I think Mike and I found this up in Wisconsin when we did this, you get to the point where you, you can just keep going. So what I want to say is, if anybody, when I stop, if anybody wants to pick up from that point forward, yourself or somebody in your organization, uh, mind you, give me your card, let's say, or, and let me know again, and I will make arrangements to make the webinar. And we can even go over this stuff, as well as the things that we missed, or just the stuff we missed. However you want to do it, let me know, okay? Because we're not going to get to a point, okay, we're done, and that's it, because we, we've got a lot of problems. Um, does anybody know the 500 feature? So get a price right Does anybody know the 500 feature that the buyer came out with? Easy 500? That's true. It is actually right. So now the rest of you yeah. all have been wondering why through the years. What does 500 mean? Yeah. 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 Who's that good for you? This gentleman, but I think that this, uh, yes, and there's somebody behind you also says that you're very nice to guess at the same time as this gentleman here. So uh, let's talk about the carnival guy here. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and so we figured if the guy had just not gotten sick for a few weeks, it would have been easy for 99 or something. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of showed something he got ahead of him, you know. But it is easy 500. So uh, this is a great feature that everybody, uh, all right, so we, we made an agreement. I'm not going to ask, I put myself in your place, I'm usually the guy sitting there. We're not going to say who didn't know that. Because I, even if I never heard of it, I'm never going to raise my hand, right? Now, we'll assume you've all heard of it. But I'm probably asked on the other side, like who uses it type of thing. So, People use it, right? So you're all familiar with it. It's one of those features that's kind of there. We all like it. I like that button with the shade. You know. Hello. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you. Welcome. Uh, I'm just wondering if you have places to sit. So let's talk about EC500s. And, and, and there are two parts of this because there are things that everybody knows, right? And there are things that people maybe, maybe haven't heard of. So um, this is how I program a one on the phone, right? A lot of people here do programming. Any of you have, when we go into program on our button on the phone, you're going to go into a select feature called EC500. That's button set on the telephone, right? Um, how many of you use the extend call 
portion of extension side. Okay, so some of you do, but not all of you. So let's take a moment real quickly. So I'm sitting at my desk, and uh, this is being recorded, right? So I, maybe we can pretend it was. I'll tell you the boss, what we call the boss feature. So you at your desk, and it's a minute to five, and you, want, you really want to get out of there. Because you probably want to get out there a minute to two as well, but it's not as a minute to five. And, um, but your phone rings and it's your boss. Well, what do you do, right? You can't stop coming back from the car. So the extend is folks that use this now. The extend call button means I'm not talking about my desk phone. I hit the extend call button on my phone. My cell phone rings, right? I hang up. I hang up the phone. Oh, get in the car. Hope you don't get pulled over by the police. If you wonder why they're at your desk, boss. But uh, that's what it does. It's a really nice feature. A lot, and I find people use this in the um, that are at the help desk. A lot of times people at help desk, right, sir? Um, I'm at my desk, yes, I'll be able to part, let me come over and do what I'm going to do. I worked health desk for many years, and it's a great feature to have because you can extend the call seamlessly. So we all know how it works on the way in, but this is also the way it works on the way out. Now, um, anybody know what that is? You do? Yes. Well, I'll tell you, but then... <laughs> well, if you want to tell them, that would work. But good, so not many people, right? You and I know this. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, in a few seconds, the whole room will So, when you go to program this, that pops up, right? Okay, this is like those other things I was showing you, the gas thing, right? It was there. Every time I program a phone for years, it's there. I know this is what past I can find that. What does it do? So, what that does is when you have extension cellular on, you hit that button, let's say when you go to lunch, and now it won't work for an hour. You can't make it 40 minutes or 30 or 10, but for 60 minutes, you're left alone. Well, people are not here. Unless you go to lunch. And after 60 minutes elapses, and you see five hours back up. It's a built-in timer, so now you know, right? And by the way, part of the presentation is called Good to Know, right? That's, that's part of our title, is Good to Know, because a lot of these really are coming handy down the road. Um, now, when I go to program extension to cellular, I see a screen that looks like this. Um, we're going to show you some other tabs because if you're like me for years, I only look at this tab. And what I do, for those of you who don't know, for the most part, I set it up. And this is where I put, for instance, uh, the cell phone. <coughs> I say, well, this can go off through ARS. You know, how is that call going to be placed by the PBX, right? I thought, oh, this part, well, there's other pages. And there's something here called a configuration set. Um, there are a number of configuration sets, but really, and I'll show you what that page looks like in a second, very helpful. Because right now when you have extension cellular, everybody's extension cellular works the same way. Call comes in, both phones ring. And that's probably what most people want. But there's other things you can do as well. Um, so, by the way, there's also the option on here to be able to um, set the type of calls I'm going to get. Right? Do I want to get internal calls, external calls? You can do that with extension cellular. You can be very specific as to what kind of calls you get. You can even be specific uh, as to whether they can't even um, make certain types of calls. So it's not just extension of cellular, bringing both phones. A lot you can do on that page. We'll go through a couple more pages I'm going to show you. So you can call a lot, right? Internal, external, all, none. You've got a lot of flexibility now. So we've taken a feature that's been around for a long time, we've all known about it, and now I can do other things with it. And it's really been there forever. For a long time. You really can do a lot of things. You can make one number <laughs> That's very nice. See, that's good to know. <laughs> wow. well, yeah, why you, I should be taking notes. Yes, sir. Why would you set it to not? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're going to really get very granular with the way that this works. Uh, and it's really kind of cool that you can do that, right? I mean, um, so uh, some other things. Now, okay, here, this, this page of the configuration set. Now, what I would do here, I'm not going to go into all of them just for the sake of time, but I label this configuration set. I think, what, what is this configuration set going to be for? Maybe remote work, maybe guest workers, right? Uh, that sort of thing. Who will this be for? Um, so I label it, like I like to do anyway, because when you do your program, you want to make sure that you put this uh, documentation in there. A few things I want to just kind of show you here. Um, I can say for my extension cellular, do I want it to detect voicemail? You know, for a long time, what we did was we would say, set those rings, right? On your cell phone, voicemail would be different than your, your PBX voicemail to make sure that. Because we always want our business calls to wind up in our business voicemail, right? So I can do that. I can detect that it's, I, I know, I don't know, but the system knows what answer. 
And if it, you know, and it can pull the call back. If it senses that it's a cell phone voicemail, pull the call back. So I can do that in configurations. Now, again, we saw there are a number of configurations. That's I don't have to do it for everybody. Some guys find let the call go wherever. Not from all cell carriers. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, barge in tone. So I happen to be here on my cell phone. And somebody goes to my desk and they're like, I wonder what Gary's talking about. I'm quite bored to death, but they can check. I get a tone that somebody picked up that phone. And all I can say is, I don't know who you are, but please hang out. What are you going to do? You can hang out. At least you know somebody's on the call. Confirmed answer means I have to, for instance, here I have to punch a button on my phone to get the call to come through. That's how you get around that carrier issue we were just talking about. <coughs> Um, it, basically, it's confirming that you, as the person live, answered the call, and you're confirming that you answered the call, so that CM knows that it wasn't just a voicemail or some recorded announcement that the network carrier was coming back. I see. Yeah. Hey, my two, you use that mic as well, because that will record you into the session. I know. No, I will remember to do that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Can you give me some? Uh, so, uh, I can look up a list, by the way, there's a command, I, I like to put these handy dandy commands up there, by the way, in a glance I can see what's been programmed, how they set up, that sort of thing. But that's in there as well. I may want to look this up. Alright, now, we're getting to a really nice feature here. It's, um, has anybody heard of the save feature? Oh, I love this. Nobody's heard this. Ah, oh, I'm rude. You think it's right away. This is the guy got to do it. So, um, Safe feature is really nice. Um, is it, the name kind of says, I don't know what came first, the acronym or what it stands for, but um, let me kind of explain this to you. And I'm going to show you this as best I, as best I can. Um, let's say you've got a help desk. Let's say it's an after hours type help desk. Uh, during the day, we normally just call. There's some folks sitting around. Let's say it's after hours. The memo goes out. And after hours, you're supposed to call this computer. And somebody, if you want any folks, right, gets the call. Um, so, Okay, this guy, most of the guys that call me, so he, in the, in the, I mean the expression, right? and he calls that number, it's Saturday, and he calls that number, right? Now, it goes to that guy. He's the guy that has the phone, right? It's, it's his day. It's usually our guys we carry our own cell phones, right? All the technicians bring their cell phones. So, it goes to his cell phone, right? That's this weekend. Well, next weekend, he doesn't. You go with somebody else get it, right? So what do I do next weekend? So do you, is anybody in the situation by the way right now we have to kind of change that coverage? So you do that, man? What do you do? How do you handle that? Uh, we just go in and um, have it set up so that the person who's on call actually just changes the 402 number. It's a 402 number? Okay. That's cool. I mean, that probably works just fine, right? And what I was showing is very similar to that. It's, uh, it does require some interaction on behalf of the, the end user. So, here, yeah, lady over here. You, you oh, can, I'm sorry. Well, depending how many people you're sharing the call on uh, call between, if it's just two people, you can go in and change between okay. using a feature expo change the coverage path one and coverage path two. Yes, and actually, I, we probably won't get to that slide. I've got it buried in there, way near the back. But that's, that's true. I've got a slide on that as well. That's a good point. And thank you, by the way, because when you bring up the things you're doing or way you're solving something, I may not say that, might be not, and we all kind of learn the process. So thank you. Um, so you can set up this feature, and there's a lot of, so SAFE does this. Um, I call it 800 number. And as an end user, I don't really care who picks it up. I just want to need somebody to help me. What SAFE does is it takes, I'll take this off next to me. When I'm on call, when I'm on call, I go through and do a list of some steps here. And I'm telling the help number that it's now my turn to be wrong with the phone ring when somebody calls it around the weekend. Next weekend, it's Mike's turn. He has a button programmed on his phone as well. He presses that button. Now the system says when somebody calls the 800 number, call Mike's cell phone. And I don't know. And by the way, if Mike forgets to turn it on, um, it's okay because then, well, it's not okay because then I get the calls, right? But so you cover it in that sense. And it's a really nice, nice way to do that. Um, I was actually going to show you how to do it. Uh, let me kind of go. See all these steps that are on here. So let me kind of show you this real quickly. Um, Okay, let's kind of take a look at it in action real quickly. I'm going to go into 
switch, I'm going to say, can you guys see this in the back? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can? Okay. Oops. <coughs> didn't log me out. Yeah, log me out. Let's see what happens here. If not, I, will, I can do this with shadow hand puppets, <laughs> which is actually it, it kind of was more interesting. But let's, let's try this out and make sure I can get kicked off. That might count as interpretive dance. The interpretive dance, right? We were talking over there. We talked about interpretive dance earlier. So, and, and actually, it doesn't come up. I've, I've got, I've taken care of this. Uh, just in case this would happen, I can explain to you exactly what would have happened on here. So let me kind of explain it to you. Okay, here's what happens. Um, I go into a form, and on that form, I put my number. My weekend, my number. Well, I can't really show you, but what I wanted to show you was, if I went into my phone, I've got a button pre-programmed, I call it safe, right? Uh, by the way, if you called it unsafe, nobody would have used the feature. I mean, I'm almost positive that's how I got that name. But, um, but anyway, so, um, had I done this, you'd hear this long string. Maybe I'll play the string for you anyway. I wanted to hear this. And...
and, and being, it, it is light, as you mentioned that. It's light, minus mobile light, and it is dotting those, those columns. So what I did here was, um, these are some of them. So what it'll do is it'll dial it, it'll dial it for you. But it's nice because one X mobile light's free. You can set up those FNEs, and now there's some things you can do that maybe you couldn't have done before, right? Plus, for all of us Apple users, it puts all the Android users in sort of a jealous <laughs> spot because it's only available for iOS. <laughs> Always a win. <laughs> okay. And by the way, any questions on this, just raise your hands or, or just pipe in. Let me know, okay? We'd love to get questions on these things. Um, next is something we call poor man's screen, or it's being called poor man's screen pop. I didn't come up with the name of that guy was told it's really it's poor person screen pop now, uh, to be correct. But um, this is a feature that allows me, so I came up with there's a lot of CTI stuff out there, right? A lot of CTI, a lot of screen popping and all kinds of things that go on if you buy these packages. Remember I said at the beginning, what if you don't have to necessarily buy things to, do, to get things done, right? What if there's a way to sort of kind of do them? Um, and this is one of those features. Uh, before I kind of go to those other screens, let me kind of explain. Um, I can set it up so that if somebody calls into my system, I'll show you the screen. And they'll be prompted by a recording for, let's just say it's an account. It doesn't have to be, but more often than not, they'll be an account. But this is purely business in that case. And um, I may say, enter your six-digit account number. Well, what will happen is I can then send it off to a group, an individual, a group, whatever. And I'll show you what, what happens after, after that. So the way I do this, and this is on the object programming side of things, um, I set up a vector directory number. Uh, this happens to be two. Uh, 7766 uh, rather. I call my uh, area code prefix 7766. What I would hear is recording. And the reason I get a recording is it sends me to a vector which plays an announcement. The announcement says enter six digits. Because they whatever, but it says enter six digits. Um, and then in this case, it's routing to my extension. But it could be routing to a group of people, right? It's routing to a hundred. Kind of nice. It's very spread. That's it. You can do other things too, like we talked about other things. You can you can do, add all kinds of intelligence and check the groups, know if they're busy, agents available, holidays. There's all kinds of things you can do. I kind of want to just distill this down to its basic, you know, just bare essence. So I can send this through to a uh, to a group. Now here's one of these old phones. I chose this because it's a nice big image, right? This guy's sitting there with his phone, and um, up pops the six digits that were entered. Uh, it doesn't do much more than that. Um, by the way, if I transfer that call, that, those digits follow it. So I decide, you know, I'm not the guy you want. Let me send it to somebody else. They'll see those digits. So it's a poor man's screen pop because I then kind of swing over and at my PC, I go to wherever the program is, I enter those digits and that pops the account. So I didn't go and buy all the CTI stuff and, and you know, that kind of thing, but, you know, it's a way to sort of do that. Uh, anybody, have a, anybody have a need for that or could see using that in an organization? Anybody do it today? I should ask who did the dumb, but he told me. That's it. All right, so um, that's kind of a cool feature, though, I think. Um, one next agent shared access control. Who here has agents in the organization? Oh, okay. Cool. Um, so since four, Elite released four, Connect Center released four, you have what's called uh, one X agent shared access control. What shared access control means is you get the one X agent program at your desktop. In the office, it's a different, different product, really, different code for it if you're going to be remote. But I can control, as an agent, I can control my phone. And I can use all the wonderful things one X agent has to offer. And I get it for every license since, since that came out. I get it for every license of the league that I've got. And, and if you've ever seen one X agent, if not, I don't know if there's any sessions still to be had you know, this year here, but look into it. Great program. Really purpose built soft phone for agents specifically. And if you've got, can anybody have uh, elite agents? I assume most of you have elite agents, right? So if you're four or greater, that means that you've got this. So take advantage of it, really. That's the only message I want to get across here. If anybody needs collateral on these items, by the way, a more in-depth discussion, further information, let us know. And we'll be happy to discuss it with you and you know, how you set it up, all kind of anything like that we're happy to get involved. That's great. Um, I was going to do the screen pop calculator for just a second because um, there have been studies that show uh, that uh, the average time that can be saved is from 15 to 30 seconds by the way on a screen pop call. 
probably you know, fewer seconds on the per minute screen pop, right? Because somebody's really taking up some of that time to put in the digits. Um, but I thought it was pretty interesting. Let's, let's try this. Okay, so a calculator that we use, right? Just the stuff in blue. So let's just say on average, I'm going to save 20 seconds a call. Can somebody give me an indication of how many calls a day the contact center takes? One. Our total? Total. 18,000? 18, 75, 75,000? Take 75,000? Probably grass. 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 Yes, they do. They get great. Um, average salary per hour, I usually say seventeen dollars. I don't know. Uh, we'll say and, and so what we want to do here, just I only kind of include this because I think that we have a discussion. We talked about we even touched on screen pop. I like the thought of, of um, being able to show this to you. So that's kind of neat though, because really despite saving 20 seconds of call over two years, um, I've saved a lot of money. That's 25 million. Um, the ROI on this was zero months. So in the time we've been talking, we have paid for it already, right? So let's definitely talk after this. <laughs> I wasn't interested in talking, so you know. Okay, so um, kind of powerful, right? I mean, it's almost like we talk about accrued interest. So you go with these astronomical numbers. We're saving 20 seconds. All right, don't worry. We're not saving 10 minutes a call, an hour a call. It's saving 20 seconds a call, right? And you can have a really great Christmas party, right? You just pay, and just, wow. See what you'd say. So I won't say that. So I want to let you see what that was. Uh, pretty impressive though, right? Really when you think about what can be saved, just like a little bit, a little bit of time. Just some additional features. Now we're going to kind of just go in some features here and there. No whole conferencing. Um, anybody wants a slide deck, it'll be up on the, you'll be able to download it if you want. I'll, I'll get it to you. Um, so I have this, but no whole conferencing is really nice. I, I like, I don't even know necessarily why I like this feature, but you've got it your system. Um, let's interact with this gentleman on the phone right now. And we're gonna bridge in Mike. And so you know that 20 seconds we talked about how over time and you know, all that stuff? Well, no conference allows me to continue talking to you and the next thing you know Mike's on the phone talking to us. And you go, hold on a second, I'm trying to get Mike, you go to the cell, you know, cell phone, or I mean cell phone. Um, hey Mike, let me bring you on with the call, none of that. Um, it allows you to, in the midst of a call, bring somebody else on and just continue your conversation throughout your entire call. This is Does he hear you dialing the other person? No. Mm -hmm. no. You're Does it still talk? We're talking away and we're just doing that. And can, you, can you drop if it goes to voicemail without dumping the oh, yeah, phone? Yeah. Sure, it's like a conference call. So, yeah. yep. But it's nice, right? To have that. Uh, Again, I, I just like it safe. I think I like it because no, it kind of freaks people out. You know? so like, <laughs> that's probably, I just realized what I like about it. You know what I mean? Hello, who's that? You're all scared. So, so that's no whole conferencing. Uh, Audix report, available since CM2. If you've got an Audix, CMM, even some third party type, eight third party, yeah, third party VM, um, I showed you how you program it, but bless you. But I can, it's a toggle button. And what it does, it's not a sophisticated thing, like we talked about poor man's free, not sophisticated, but it does its job. If you want to record a call, and you don't care to caveat, make sure you're in a, you tell people if you're in a two-party state or whatever, right? Um, you could say, okay, hold on, I'm gonna record the call. Hit that button on your phone. It records, hit it again, it stops. Hit it again, you go back and forth. Obviously in the financial industry, big, you know, big no-no, but you can do it. So it'll wind up in your mailbox. So you can designate the mailbox it goes to. All I'm really doing is putting a hundred room extension, the same hundred room extension that would be on your phone to get you into your into voicemail. That's all I do. And now everybody here is a recording system. You can all record your calls if you've got that. It, it does give you the beat. So yeah. law enforcement, because I did it as a yeah. cheap way to record our, our police calls. Nice. So it's like, yeah. And that's on or off and turn on. Yes, it's so a great thing. And the PA to me is noted that, yes, that the legal off. terms that you copy the call to the box. And then actually in a two-party state, that's, that's sufficient, I guess, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. 
So, um, but it's a nice, nice feature. You will turn on and have to buy a recording solution. The recording people will hate you, right? And the people on the... Well, I'll just realize that essentially what this is is that you're creating a voicemail. Right. Yeah. So, it's, it would, it would be in comparison to that against a full commercial type recording system, you know, it's not searchable or anything like that. Right. It's just following the normal archive rules for a voicemail. So every time you hit the button to stop it and start it, it's not just one recording, it's creating a new voicemail every time you start a new recording. Yep. And by the way, here, there's a gentleman for uh, two. Is this just with all it's not on message or No, you can use it in any case. It's a bridge. You're basically okay. bridging it. I've seen it used with third party, actually. Mm -hmm. Third party voice. Like, if you record the entire call of monitor messaging, you just go in through the web client and email, email you the way, the way file and they have a hard copy of it. You start archiving them basically, yeah. Yeah, create a folder, it's great idea. Yeah. And as you, as you specified here, I talked about, here's some, some talk to the talks. We're saving you all this money here, this is great. Yeah. Probably have to manage your message. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. What else we got? Crisis alert. Who knows this? Ah, he will learn more. <laughs> Next time, I'm going to ask a question. Nobody, you know, please don't raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, I live in Illinois too. You have to know. it. Illinois is like the land of E911. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, I was working with a client recently, and they're out of state. And they said specifically, we'll follow the Illinois laws. And I got to get any chances, right? Because Illinois is very strict. That's where the law. Uh, came from, right? When we talked about this, that's there was an incident occurred in Illinois that caused it uh, to have that, those laws. So, Christ's alert is very nice. Um, so, for the four people that don't know, sorry, um, when you dial 911, we can tell the system what phones to dial, and they give you the most annoying, if you've ever tested it, really annoying sound. And I can program any number of ways. I can even say that it won't stop until everybody turns it off, or it'll stop when one person turns right? It flashes, it noise, and it just says to me on the phone. Uh, we were talking, Lynn and I were talking with uh, some folks uh, not long ago uh, at the hospital, and they weren't actually even using it at, at the time. They were in the session we gave in Wisconsin, but I started using it now. It's really nice, particularly if you have folks in your organization that are like a security desk or, a, uh, or a, um, maybe even some place that have health groups in there, in there, but at least put the attendant on there, the main person at the front door. Because depending if she if that person he or she recognizes the extension where it says it was called, when the first responders come in, they know where to where to send it. Right? Even if they're not at their office, whatever phone they picked up, okay guys, go to that place. So again, keeping with what you can do with what you've already got, um, we can do that. It used to be, I think it was 10, it was 10 at one time you could read 10 points, which had annoying, annoying sound, 10 points. Now you can annoy 750 points. Really um, but it's it's nice. So just I'm not gonna ask to show you all the time, but can anybody see using that feature? Well, you're already using it anyway. But anybody who's not using it, right? Really important. I mean, we spend so much time and energy looking into solutions for 911 and all that kind of stuff, and it's great, it's wonderful. Until that time though, it's always great to have this as well. Or maybe in addition to it, why not? You've got to press a button to say that you've taken it. Now here is probably one of my favorite things in the whole system. Um, if you got five, got two dollar one or later, um, there was something. The dance is about to start. Anybody else feeling good? Thank you. Um, so uh, if you got five, got two dollar one, you there was a, a term called green features. I might not be still calling green features, but they're still called green features. So a green feature, for those who don't know, was something that somebody went to Avaya through something called GRIP. We'll talk about GRIP. Somebody went to Avaya and they said, we need this feature. It's not in there. we got to have this feature. And Avaya would spend all kinds of time and effort and money and R&D, and they create the feature. And they, the customer would pay for all that. And then they would sell it to you if you needed that feature. They had to recoup, right, their money and all. So a green feature was one that you had to go and say, hey, I want that too. And Avaya would sell it to you. And uh, it's good. Like it was, only, it was like the early version of the App Store kind of thing, right? You know, you could go get that feature if you needed it. So as a 5.2.1, for those of you who are there, they're free. You don't have to pay for them anymore. Um, and there's a command. If I did my job, yes, change system special is the command. 
And that will come up with this nine page, well, in this case it's nine page form. If you're going to look at the book or the list, there are a bunch of special features in there. Some more special than others, and, and some of them to the point where you can't turn them on. There are certain features, very few, of ISIS, says no way. You have to still talk to us because of feature interactions. Because they don't want you to turn that on, and the next thing you know, there's all kinds of weird things happening. But the vast majority of features you can do. And I'm just going to go into a few here. I'm not going to really go into what the features are. I just want to show you some I thought were pretty cool. Here's some of them, of the nine pages worth of features, right? Um, Jimmy, if I, Lynn, you, there was one you really liked. I can't remember which one. There's one out here we used to talk about. We used to talk about. I think it was a blast conference or something. Where, um, oh no, per station music on hold. That might have been it. She's shy. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Come up here, Lynn. No, so, uh, <laughs> But these are nice features, right? And all you do, you've got five to one. Yeah, okay, I want per station music on hold. I want it for this person. <laughs> Go in, find the thing, hit yes. That's it. Don't you have to hit yes to that to have no music on hold per station too? Do you have no music on hold? Like not you know, or you turn off music on hold? Yes, but nothing special application. I don't know what it does yet, yeah. But to, to get that particular, in other words, uh, somebody had, somewhere somebody needed that, for a specific, you know, and so you, but I like the fact that you got it, right? If, if you're 521, you got it. I just like the fact you go to the screen, you hit a yes, done. Very nice. Very, very good. Caveat car. to that, though, yeah. as in, you know, all new cars or mileage may vary. Please read the documentation. There are feature interactions. You right. don't want to arbitrarily go in and turn all of these on because they will interact with other features that you're using and they could break something. So be very careful. Thank you. Or I would ask if somebody here would, would do me the favor of turning them all on. I'm just so curious. Looking for the small mushroom cloud. That's right. That's right. We'll fire you. We're on the news anyway, so I'll fire you. We are. Let me get So, um, the, as a matter of fact, it was a special application that allowed us to go. Remember, we had 10, 10 Christ alerts in a fire truck to 250 on their own. And somebody went and said, remember I said it's up to 750 people we get annoyed, right? That was a special application. I say 8608. Well, I can do that. Yeah. Cool, right? I like that. I love that. Inter-gateway alternate routing is available in 3.0. And uh, we call it IGAR. We talked about it just because we like to say IGAR. We like that <laughs> for some reason. IGAR. Um, so what is IGAR? And I'll touch on it. Mike, I know you've got a lot of additional info on this as well. So um, IGAR is a way for me to be able to say that if I, from more than one system, right? I've got more than one location. And traditionally, I'm traversing that location through a network of some sort, more often than that PLS, essentially a primary network that I've got. And calls are going between, between there. So what will happen is I may have, let's say I originally put that in for data. And then I decide to put my voice over, right? So the pipe is only so big, and I may still want to give data precedence over there, right? Because that's why I put it in. I'm just giving you an example. That might not be what, the way you did it. But now calls are going to traverse there as well. So you have to be able to say, well, that pipe is only so big, right? And depending on what codec you're using, I'm using 30K, I'm using 90K, you know, for those calls. And how many people do I have calling between offices? Checking voicemail, maybe they've got a lot of traffic going one way, or both ways. Um, so what happens when a pipe gets clogged up? Because that could eventually happen, right? So what you can do is you can set these, uh, if you call it mission control, you can set up a uh, bandwidth. You could use it by a specific number, how many bytes, you could use it by percentage of the pipe. And you could say, that when Mike goes, well, you would say Mike, but when Mike goes to pick up that phone to make a call, and he's going to call uh, this gentleman right here um, across the other office, make it a phone call. Don't traverse the pipe. Now, Mike won't know that. No, no way of knowing that happened, nor does he care, nor does the person receiving the phone care. But it's a way to keep, keep the integrity of that bandwidth on that pipe, right? I think he's fine. Uh, and you might want to monitor, though, if that happens an awful lot, then I would definitely say you want to beef up that bandwidth on there between all the two offices. But IGAR's great, uh, is, is really good. We use it in a lot of multi-site. I, I, probably every multi-site office, I'll well, probably put it in there to some extent. Uh, good to know, right? Anybody, I'm sure a lot of you guys have multi-set offices, you call back and forth. So really good to know you're not going to clog that pipe up, and the call still gets completed. Out of curiosity, was anybody here using IGAR at all? 
Okay, are you using it as an overflow or for remote offices? Or we're actually, we're using it to consolidate two call centers into one. So it's a private T1 just for the voice. It's not our, on our data network at all. So are you, are, do you have two separate switches that are we, connected together that way? Yeah, we have an S8720 okay. with an S8500 ESS off of it. And so with one T1 between the IGAR, because we're using it as a data and not a voice rate, we can pump more than 24 calls. Sure. Right. Right. So, uh, uh, couple, some of the caveats to this are that the trunking itself needs to be, should be ISDN. Um, part of the reason is because between the locations, we look at the remote gateway site and, and our central site, or two different sites that are part of the same switch. What it actually does is it looks at the call admission control, and depending upon how you, you open it up or crank it down, um, I've actually had some customers with remote sites that have set it up where they're not routing any calls over the wide area network because they don't have enough bandwidth at that facility, but they can get an ISDN PRI very inexpensively at the remote site. You dedicate a DID at both locations for IGAR. And then as that call gets launched over the public switch network, the reason why it's important to be ISDN is because the average ISDN call placement time is about three quarters of a second in the continental United States. Rules change. If I've got experience in Europe, where it can take anywhere from six to thirteen seconds to set up an ISDN call in, in Europe, and if you think about the impact on a call, when I'm placing that call in the United States, and instead of routing over your IP network, it's being placed over an ISDN network, and I'm adding three quarters of a second, <coughs> you don't. That's not even a ring cycle, so you don't really notice the impact of that additional time it takes to connect the call. But when you get to some of these areas where it's like an analog connection, or in Europe where it's three to 15 seconds to, to connect that call, you've sat there for an additional three to five potential ring cycles and you're going, God, what is going on? Is this call ever gonna connect? So if you're, in, in that instance, if you think about it, if you're a remote site and you've got centralized voicemail, somebody calls into that remote site and all of a sudden iGuard kicks off to complete that call coverage to voicemail because that remote user didn't answer, all of a sudden that call coverage path goes from to four rings on average, which is what we set call coverage for for voicemail, to all of a sudden it goes to eight rings or ten rings. So it's, it's just the caveat is there, it's an extremely powerful feature, but be aware of the interactions. Um, it also doesn't play necessarily very well with contact center, being aware of things like announcements that are being played. <laughs> if you have a call coming in at one site and you reference an announcement over IGAR, at another site, that three quarters of a second to a second might take just to set that connection up. All of a sudden, you've just lost three quarters to a second of that announcement we're trying to play. So this is just, it's not really intended to be used in contact center environments unless you're very careful about how you use it. So or announcements are duplicated at both sites. Perfect. Or, or if you live in Germany. We talked about this. Here, just to prove this. Now we know, we talked about this here. There's a white paper. Anybody German, any German people? I pulled up the white paper to talk about it before. So, um, certain areas have really better quality on the, we won't spend a lot of time since nobody from Germany here, unless you're planning on going to Germany then. Uh, I'll take the slide with you, but, um, but Mike is right. And for the most part, it's not meant for contact center. You have to have a really robust network, Really, you know, your delays, all those things. You have, you have some weird interactions otherwise. Okay. Okay, now we're getting down to the, some of the other features that I didn't want to go to the top of the list because they're kind of nice features, but, you know, posted messages. So, this is again how I put it on somebody's uh, screen. So, posted message would be, again, older systems. Right now, we all have present syndication and we have other things on our smart clients and our soft phones, but just off a telephone, you have an older office, you want to put some posted messages. What this really does, um, I can put um, a series of messages to choose from in meeting, out to lunch, that sort of thing. There are a series of canned messages that you can do. All you do is hit the button and put in the number. Hit the button and dial 8, it's out of stack. Hit the number and dial 14, I'll be back in 30 minutes. I'll set them back in 30 minutes. You can also, there's another screen behind this, by the way, right? So there's another screen behind this that lets you make up your own messages. 
right? So I go, I think it's 30, I believe, is the, uh, the limitation. So you have 15 can messages. Now here's what happens. I get up to go to a meeting, and I hit the button, and it will get light out. Um, somebody calling my phone from within the organization with a display phone, we'll see that message on it. We have to train people to log, we're not used to doing that, right? But um, it'll just appear on their screen. So it's kind of nice, again, just good to know. Um, maybe you're gone for a week or whatever, right? But you can put those messages on, hit the button, and somebody calling you will see that message. Do the, uh, the messages change if you have, like, if it says, like, back in an hour? And they, you know, they call you and it's half an hour when you post it, does it change? Like, it doesn't it's have a built-in time yeah. built into the message, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a nice special application feature, actually. Yeah, seriously, it's a good thing. <laughs> <things. laughs> it doesn't change automatically, but yeah. <laughs> now, as you were talking about, right? Vic, can you do that, right? So there's GRIP, Global Requirements Integration Process. So GRIP is kind of how we got to these special application features in some cases, not all. In some cases, that's how we got to those special applications. Um, Avaya has a process, there's, there's a format you have to fill out, make requests. They will listen to your uh, requests for features, change the features, additional things, whatever you may want to do, such as what the gentleman said back there, for instance, right? You can put in a group request, and it takes about 35, about 35 days to go through this entire cycle. It gets reviewed by each one of those boxes, represents the review uh, part of the structure. Uh, and it gets voted on. And if they think that's a great feature, then it's a special application feature and you're good to go. Um, you, they could write back to you and actually tell you, even if they did it, say, sorry, you know, we didn't do it. There's actually an appeal process for that as well. You know, getting a lawyer and all this kind of mess. Can you get his name back to you? Yeah. <laughs> you don't get any royalties. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. The poor guy that, that came up with like a big rack or something. <laughs> there is a running joke that uh, obviously a lot of these come from folks that see, uh, you know, a product efficiency. This is I really wanted to do that, uh, but it doesn't do that. Why doesn't it do that? So the running joke is that if you just put an E and an S on the end of it, that's really where these come from. It's people, you know, with gripes. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> the gripes feature. Uh, so, but again, very, when I say good to know throughout this pro presentation, because it is good to know. Your organization, even if you're a gentleman who's upgrading, right, you'll have a brand new PBX uh, in a short period of time, let's say, it, that may not do what you want. That be, this process is available to you, it's really nice to buy a dozen, it's a way that they're listening to what their end users are uh, required. And, and note that this isn't just for the PBX, right, this is for any application or solution that Avaya makes. If there's something in one X communicator, the one X mobile client that you don't like, that you, that something that you wish you could do, uh, you know, work with your resellers or your account team and, and have a, a you know developer request and they'll submit it for you. Very nice. Very good. Um, something that's been in your PBX all these years also is the ability to go beyond your six-party conferencing. So we all know, right? Or I shouldn't make that assumption, but uh, communication management is the ability of a six-party meet me conference, which is great. I, you know, that surveys were done, research was done by line. Six is pretty much the limit at any given time you wind up uh, for the most part. Of course, then there are other, other options you can do to purchase to purchase your bugs, extend upon that. So here is this disclaimer, this is the mic this time. This six plus six equals ten. Okay? And this is recorded as six plus six this time. Um, here's why six plus six is ten. So we've got five people on the blue call, and five people on the gold or whatever call that is called. And um, I can have one party bridge into the other by using a resource on the other call. Now, I've got, so here's a caveat, right? So I've got a, a ten party call. I've gone from a six party conference bridge, now I have a ten party conference bridge, which I think is pretty good to know. Now, the disclaimer is couple. One is we cannot guarantee the quality of the call. It was not meant to carry the voice and bridge together the voice for 10 people, for six. Uh, also, there might be some interactions as far as, I'm really in two separate calls, so I can't do the same things on the second call, interact with that second call, same, same way I would interact with people on the call that I am on. Um, and so, that pretty much explains that, I guess, right? But again, if you know that I can do, uh, I'll give 10 people on a, on, a, on a call. Five people join the group, they call in, the other one, they call in, right? And I only, it's one individual, I make that bridge between the two. 
if that one individual hangs up the phone by mistake or something, like that, they all get to that second group. That is correct. Uh, and so if, I, I think we've all done something like this where you're trying to get on an audio bridge, and this will make a lot of sense as to why we don't recommend doing this. And then all of a sudden there's not enough ports to get into that bridge, right? So what do you do? You ad hoc conference to other people. So what happens, in that, if you think about that audio group, there are two separate audio groups. There's you with that ad hoc audio group, and then there's all the mixing and balancing and equalizing that's occurring inside that separate audio bridge. So what you end up with are the three people that are over here, when they talk, they're like, oh, geez, that other guy is really loud. But then they really strain to hear the other conference group because it's not one single equalized audio group, you end up with multiple different groups that are equalized independently, and that's part of the reason why I would strongly recommend you not do this. Any, any questions on anything so far? We've only got about three or four minutes left. Any questions so far on anything? You're sending the slide now. Pardon me? You're sending the slide now. Yeah. Absolutely. And you'll see all the other stuff. Remember I said to people, at the beginning I was stating that this slide presentation there's a lot of slides, right? Not the 217, but there are a lot of slides. So we didn't have a specific stop point. Because we're not going to get to a slide, it's like we're done. Because we, if we had more time or if there were fewer questions, you know, we didn't know how far we would go with it. So we'll get the deck out and you'll be able to see all the things that lie behind here. Far end mute and selective conference is also very nice. For, this is where calls come in over trunks. And when that conference is set up, I have the ability to program buttons on my phone. That will allow me to do a far end mute, the dog barking, for instance, type of thing is perfect, right? Um, you know, UPS guy shows up just when I got that call, right? It's every time. And, um, but you can do a far end mute. So kind of good to know as well. So anybody, can anybody use this feature? You do, right? I mean, I, I think everybody can use the feature, really. I mean, it's to some extent, at some point. This may be the last one we have time for today. Uh, this is called the Team Button. Uh, team Button is not a feature that's really used in the States uh, that much. Developed big time in Europe. Uh, I understand also Japan had a huge role in the, which I'm not surprised, you have teaming in Japan, right? It's a big teamwork uh, situation. So um, what it really, we, we have other ways of doing this. But just so you know, a Team Button would be, I can set up, I am in a team. And I can set up this gentleman to be a team, and this person to be in the same team. Just by virtue of the fact that I did that, allows me to do things like see when a call is ringing at that person's phone, actually look at this, the caller ID, and determine if I want to pick it up, that sort of thing. And I'm going to create a big groups. I'm going to have to create a group and put people in it. That's what I do with 100, right? I create a group, put a bunch of people. Just by adding you to that particular team, and you can be multiple teams. But all I have to do is add you to the team, and you've got that feature functionality. So kind of nice, but we tend to have other ways of getting around here in the States, I think. Uh, by how many so calls can you get all of it? I don't even know a limit on, on the team button, quite honestly. I've never, I could have passed the chart, I've never even seen a limit. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, head. I, yeah. I, it, it's generally, we don't see it very often here in the States. Um, as of I began to expand inside of Europe, uh, it became very quickly obvious that we were never going to get anywhere because team as a concept in Europe is table stakes for telephony systems. So it's nice. I know we're just about out of time. Who's, let me just take a quick peek. I'm so curious about this. Never mind. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to call this nice because the call comes in. This is my last feature. I, I call, I'm on the phone. The call comes in. And I can put the call on the hold and answer it. Or I can just hit the other button. It'll automatically put the call on the hold. So this feature actually makes sense when it's called, right? Because it's the one feature I got you know what. But it's automatic hold. I just, I'm talking. Incoming call, hit the button, first call gets on hold automatically, I take the second call. So again, good to know that, we, that that's over there. Um, we really do have a lot more, a lot more slides on here, but um, just always want to see how far we get every time we do this presentation. Um, any questions at all? No? Okay. Now, the last thing I do want to ask is, um, if you encounter or you know of a feature that perhaps you're using today uh, that I have not talked about, of course, maybe somewhere back in the deck, but um, I'd sure like to know about it, and uh, you can put down my info off the uh, speaker's roster, you know, for this presentation. Let me know, because we're going to be doing this presentation all over the place. We've already done it before, and I'd like to be able to add things to it. And the best thing to do is, you know, I, I know the features that I really would like to know, but I don't know what anybody in this room maybe has found that's kind of a cool feature. So I'd love to know about it. 
we'll go after this. So thank you for your time. Appreciate it very much. Thank you.